So last year, after a few uh, documented egregious cases, I launched a sexual assault working group bringing together experts and officials from across the Justice Department. I asked my principal deputy to lead that work uh, and to do so on a very expedited basis because this is urgent, urgent work. Uh, that group came together, uh, did terrific work to produce a report with about 50 different recommendations. Uh, the director and I discussed those. Um, she's adopted all of them and we are working um, to implement all of them. That's one of the things I said to the, to the wardens here this morning, because it's their responsibility to help implement those recommendations. We try to maintain those goals. Um, when, we, when, when the job closes, we try to have that we're going to need to make adjustments, we're going to need to... And we've been very clear, the director's been very clear, the attorney general and I have been very clear that that is not acceptable and there will be accountability and that's what you've seen. Um, and there will continue to be that uh, kind of accountability. But most importantly, we've got to do all of the work to prevent that from happening in the first place. So that's about creating and fostering the culture that the director talked about. And I think it's not just about those in our care and custody, it's really about creating a better work environment for those who work in this field. This field is difficult, it's hard. And if we continue to do corrections today, like we have been doing it, the average lifespan of a corrections professional is 58. And it's because of those cortisol levels. It's because they're in the state of hypervigilance all day long. So this work that we've done here is really wanting to create a culture that brings that down, creates a more normal environment, a more humane environment, and that equates to a safer environment for both our employees and those in our care and custody.